So I'm going to go through the um, kind of a management overview of NHK International and our history with Zabbix, which is uh, very recent. Um, so I'm James Green, work for NHK International. I oversee our North America and Europe operations. Uh, about 20 years in the IT uh, industry and very passionate about open source and bringing it to both large and small businesses. Um, been working with Zabbix for about a year. Uh, so NHK International is the North American headquarters of NHK Spring Company, um, founded in 1976. We do a lot for the automotive industry and um, some stuff for the IT industry. Um, probably most of you have never heard of it except for NTT. Um, and then uh, from an IT side, we have about eight locations that NHK International supports. Those are in North America and Europe. And we have about 1,000 users, 250 servers. Uh, so what brought us to Zabbix? Why now? Um, a lot of it's been rapid growth. So we've increased the um, size of our system significantly over the last few years. We've uh, increased by more than 500% over the last five years, um, which has led to a lot of new challenges and stuff that we have to address. <coughs> through monitoring. We also have a lot of new internal practice changes. Um, customers are demanding more. You know, years ago, the IT system really didn't matter towards the business operations. And now the IT system is crucial to production running and the entire business um, continuing to operate. Uh, and then the other thing is we want to be able to respond quicker. Kind of the past practice was we would just wait for a user to notify there was an issue, and then after the user notified there was an issue, somebody would start looking into it and respond. And um, with the system being so integrated into production and stuff now, we have to have some way to proactively uh, monitor what's going on and, and also you know, respond to downtimes and outages. So why Zabbix? Um, We've tested and used Nagios. We uh, actually, and SolarWinds, we still use both of them. Um, Nagios is actually used for some uh, production type IoT monitoring, which was uh, kind of interesting in the last presentation because it ties into that thing. Um, but we never really liked Nagios. Um, it's just not as friendly as Zabbix. It doesn't give you the data as, as well as Zabbix does. Um, and, you know, it doesn't use a uh, database natively. Um, some of the other things we really liked about Zabbix was the maintenance periods, um, being able to define um, when you can, um, when the system's going down so that it, those aren't treated as system outages. All of the plants are our kind of our customers, so we have to be able to report to them uh, that the systems are working, not working, and before with some of our other monitoring, even if we were doing maintenance, it was just counted as downtime, so it kind of affected those things. Uh, the screens and stuff in Nagios is also a, a big thing. This was kind of a comparison we did as we were looking at the different uh, uh, monitoring, and this is based on our knowledge, so anyone that watching later, I guess, that's a Nagios or SolarWinds fan. Um, if this isn't correct, this is just how we felt uh, from looking through the, the information. Um, with Zabbix, we kind of felt like we got everything we needed. Um, the service monitoring was kind of a key part to, to be able to deliver those services. And then the, uh, the ability to do notifications multiple different ways through scripts and stuff was also a, a very nice one. And then, of course, the biggest feature for Zabbix was the graphical display, being able to report and look on the, uh, how the data is coming in and, and the overall system um, environment. So kind of what we did, and this is one of our smaller sites, um, it's all run on CentOS 7 with SE Linux turned on, which uh, led to some difficulties, but it wasn't too much. Uh, we wrote 
some custom scripts to go in and monitor stuff um, on our phone system, on our email system. Um, proxy servers we're, we're working on. Uh, as I said, we have diverse sites all over North America and Europe, so trying to collect all that data back to one location without the proxy servers uh, kind of overloading the system, so that's uh, an area we're working on now. And then developing those IT services, so actually looking in and saying that um, this is what's required for this to actually run, uh, and then grouping all those together into a service so that when we report, we can actually say that um, this service was actually available. Some of our old monitoring systems, you know, maybe the server was available, but the service wasn't available, or the network infrastructure allowing the users to get to that service wasn't available. So by going through with the IT services and kind of creating those things, we can then say that um, everything is available, that the user should have full access into it. Um, this is another one of our smaller sites, kind of the network infrastructure. Um, so with Zabbix, it's in a lot of the templates. Most of the stuff we've needed to monitor so far has been built in. Uh, it pulls right from the templates. Um, we can get all the data we need from it, and then some of it, you know, we've made custom scripts or the ability to run the remote commands has been uh, kind of nice. Um, so how it's kind of changed us and what we're doing is we can predict downtimes, um, so we can uh, start to look at kind of how the system's functioning and that there's you know some service or process or, or network device that's overloading, um, it's going to fail soon and then we can begin to schedule those outages to actually uh, fix the issue before it becomes an issue, which kind of ties into the responding quicker. We can then look at um, how, how the systems are being used and kind of um, identify when they're getting overloaded or when we need to expand them. Um, one of the other things that ties into all that is um, we've actually found systems we didn't really know about. So things were installed, put out there years ago, and then as we start to go through everything, you can begin to find there's some stuff on your network that maybe you forgot about. Um, identifying needs also, we can look at you know, resource usage and stuff of all the systems and determine you know, what's being overused, what's being underutilized, and you know, kind of in the virtual environment, we can shift stuff around to say that you know, we need to move resources off of this cluster over to this cluster so that it, it kind of balances out more with the hardware that we have, uh, which goes along with showing the waste that, uh, that's out there. We can then look at um, what resources are kind of being wasted and work to improve those. Um, so some of the things we're kind of looking to expand to is user device monitoring. So collecting information from the actual uh, users' computers and not just the uh, network and servers. Um, we wouldn't really want to alert on that, but we can collect the data to then say that um, you know, these user PCs are slowing down and uh, kind of look at the overall trend, which can help for you know, hardware replacements and upgrades in the future. It can also help to start to predict um, security issues on the network if you see you know, large changes in um, a system and the resources that it's being used. Um, we're also looking to expand our location base. So we've kind of started with our North America and Europe locations. Um, our headquarters is in Japan, so we would, it's kind of a proof of concept to show to the larger NHK group. Um, how Zabbix can be used, the, the different use cases, what's um, uh, the benefit that we can provide or we can gain from it and how we can predict things in the future. Uh, the other big thing that we're working towards is the production equipment monitoring, which sounds like we need to talk to Systematica about that. Um, so we want to monitor actual the, our production line equipment and not just network and servers. So we want to track, you know, is the production line running? If it's not running, uh, why is it not running? What parts are, are down? And also be able to say that, you know, it's down because of maintenance. 
Um, this is really coming as we've grown as a global company because now when we look at um, our operations, if you're at the plant site, it's easy to know the plant line's down, but if the plant's in Hungary and we're in you know, the United States and we need to know that the production line's not running because that's going to affect customers all over the world, then uh, we really don't have a seamless or an automated way to do that now. Um, so we're hoping to, to take Zabbix into that um, production equipment type IoT monitoring and environment. Um, some of the things we learned um, just from the short time we've used it and kind of going through the, the setup and installation is that it's kind of important or critical to define the foundation as you start the project, you know, how you're going to monitor stuff, uh, the scheme you're going to monitor it, and then what type of things those monitor. Uh, for example, if you monitor all your devices based on DNS and DNS goes down, then then you really kind of lose everything that you're monitoring or, or everything seems like it's down. Um, alerting was another big one. You really want to configure it with only the information needed and the timing. Kind of when we first set up Zabbix, it was a great, we've got Zabbix up and running, let's just turn on alerting and um, everything looks really good. And, and as soon as we did that, there's a lot of tuning and tweaking that you have to do inside of it. And people just started getting, uh, the IT members, the infrastructure team started getting hundreds of alerts an hour or a day. And, and when you overload people with alerts, then they just create rules to send them all to to junk or delete them so they don't have to, to worry about them. Uh, and then the other thing is to plan your backup. So uh, before we, we kind of started the project, the mindset was this was just a monitoring environment. So it doesn't really matter if we lose it because all we're doing is checking if the system's up and it can be uh, re-implemented pretty easy. But um, there's a lot that goes into it, so you want to back it up. There's also a lot of data it collects that becomes useful um, as you start to use the system and stuff. Um, before we go into questions, so kind of one of the other big things that we really gained with Zabbix was the ability to have the, um, the screens and the network network maps and that kind of stuff so that we can actually visualize the data um, because when, when we don't visualize the data, it's kind of hard to detect really what's going on. And from our operations, we manage most of the IT resources um, from our office, our headquarters in Michigan. We're monitoring stuff all the way around the world. So knowing that a single service is down at one location is kind of difficult, but when we put it up on a, uh, in our IT office, we have a large screen that then they can watch and, you know, it'll change color based on the, the issues that are having. That's it. Thank you very much. <laughs> do we have some questions on slide, please? Of course we do. And the first one is, what was the biggest issue you had while implementing Zabbix? Uh, probably the biggest issue, it's, Zabbix was, maybe the biggest issue was overthinking it at first. The next biggest issue was SE Linux. Um, getting Zabbix to work with SE Linux versus just putting SE Linux in permissive mode, which we had it all working and since we were still fairly new using Zabbix, we thought we would just upgrade to 3.4 and upgrading to 3.4 introduced some new SE Linux challenges that we had to address and, and overcome, but I'd say that was probably the biggest challenge. Okay, and the next one is, did you have an issue to find a server network traffic graphs by switchboard description? And how did you deal with it? I don't understand, can you repeat it? Did you have an issue to find server network traffic graphs by switchboard description? Um, no, we didn't. Um, if I'm understanding the question correctly, 
a lot of our network stuff had been documented enough that we knew which traffic was going across to each interface. So, so finding which one to monitor wasn't, wasn't an issue for us. Okay, and the last one, what is the biggest advantage you are waiting together with implementing Zabbix? Uh, I think the biggest advantage will be the um, moving it into that IoT environment and monitoring our production equipment. Um, taking it out of just the, moving it from just a IT system and an IT resource into a, this is a core business system um, and critical to the business operations, I think will be the biggest advantage we'll gain. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Maybe we have some questions from the audience. No question, then thank you very much. Thank you.